Okay, so this bell work here, I've actually pulled a problem from our homework packet. And so we're gonna try out problems one and three for our bell work. Um, so you do not need to write this in your journals. I would rather you work it out with me in your homework packet. So if you can turn to page two on problem one, I'm gonna be looking at. And so in these problems, you have to graph it and fill out the following questions here. Now, first off, when you are looking at this equation, it's a quadratic because the highest power here is two. And so that tells me that, um, you know, I'm gonna have to graph this parabola. But here's the thing, this one is in standard form. So standard form is when it looks like there are no parentheses and there is a coefficient in front of x squared and the x to the first power and then just a constant. So it basically looks like three terms and then there's a number in front of it. So a, b, and c are just coefficients. So in this case, a here is this negative one that's in front of x squared. b here is the negative four. And c here is negative four. Now we talked about standard uh, form. Standard form is great uh, if you want to find the y-intercept very quickly because it's always your c value. So in this case, my y-intercept is at negative 4, so I'm going to plot it on my graph on the y-axis. And so my y-intercept is at 0, negative 4. Remember, y-intercept is a coordinate. So from there, I can... Um, I have one point on the graph, but I need three points to make a parabola. Three points, two points that reflect each other, and one point which is the middle, which is the vertex. So how about we go find the vertex? So here's the downside about standard form, is that the vertex, you need that formula to uh, figure it out what that value would be. So the formula helps you get um, x first, so if you want to find the vertex, you have to find x, which is that formula negative b over 2a. And so b and a are referring to the coefficients in the uh, equation. So if I were to use this, this would be negative, b here is negative 4, so this is really negative 4 being plugged in, over 2 times a, a here is negative 1. And so if you were to work this out, this would be positive 4. Negative times negative 4 is positive 4. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. So that tells me x here is equal to negative 2. And so my x here is negative 2. But if x is negative 2, what's y, right? So we can figure out y if we, can, if we plug in our x into the equation and find y. So that I'm going to do that here on the side. So y is equal to negative, negative 2 squared minus 4, negative 2 minus 4. So what I'm doing here is taking this x value, plugging it in here. Notice it's right here now. And I'm going to work this out using order of operation. So order of operation says parentheses first. So inside this parentheses, I can't simplify anymore. Make sure you do not distribute this exponent inside the parentheses because there is a square here. So order of operation says inside the parentheses first, which we can't really simplify any further. Then exponents are next. So negative 2 squared is positive 4, but then there's a negative outside of it, so I'll bring that down. On this side, we can multiply, so negative 4 times negative 2 gives me negative 8 minus 4. Negative 4 minus 8 gives me negative, oh, actually, this would be a positive, right? Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8, my bad. So negative 4 plus 8 gives me positive positive 4. I'm going to bring down the minus 4, so this is really um, 0. Looks like my vertex here is um, negative 2 and my y is 0. And so if I were to plot this, negative 2, 0 is right here. And I'm going to plot a point. 
And so remember, that's my vertex. So that's the middle of my parabola. So when I connect the dots, I should really make this the middle, and so I should connect it this way. So it looks like it's sloping down. And so looking at this here, if I were to, you know, uh, find the other third point, I need to reflect it. And so how we did that is we would use um, the vertex, right? So in this case, our axis of symmetry here, it goes through the vertex. And so that looks like it's two units away. So I have to go two units to the other side. So that would make it right here. And then I'm going to connect the dots. And so there we go. We have our parabola. And so it looks like this here is a minimum. I'm sorry, a maximum. Because it is a highest point on our parabola. So we have a maximum. The axis of symmetry seems to be at x equals negative 2. Looks like it cuts it at x equals negative 2. So write that there. The domain is always all real numbers for parabolas because there's an arrow to the left and right. The range is the lowest y value. So this parabola points down. So that's telling me it's going from negative infinity to the highest y value. So right here. And that's at zero. I'm going to put a bracket around that. And that's it. So hope that helps you out with your homework. Let's now try number three. So again, we have it in standard form. So remember that when you have standard form to identify what is your A, in this case it's two in front of the X squared, B, which is in front of the X to the first power, which is negative eight, and C, which is the constant. But C is also your Y intercept. So let's go ahead and plot that. So this one's positive five, so if I plot it here on the Y axis, that Y intercept is zero five. And so when I look at this here, I have one point. I'm going to try to get the next point. So this is when I want to try to find the vertex. And the vertex, you need to use that formula x equals negative b over 2a. And so when using this formula, you need a, um, where's my marker? So you need a negative, you need a b and an a. So b here is negative 8. But there's a negative out here by default, so then you have plug in b, which is negative 8, over 2 times a, a is 2. So if you multiply this out, this is positive 8 over 4, divide that, that's 2. So in this case, the vertex here for x is 2. Then to find y, I need to plug my x into the equation. So I'm going to plug in this 2 into where I see an x and work it out. So I'll work it out here on the side. So 2 times 2 squared minus 8 times 2 plus 5. So if I work this out, I have to do order of operations. So inside this parentheses, I, can, I can't really simplify anymore. But then I could do the exponent. So 2 squared is 4. Then 2 is on the outside. 2 times 8 is 16 plus 5. 2 times 4 gives me 8 minus 16 plus 5. 8 minus 16 is negative 8, plus 5 is negative 3. So our y here looks like it's negative 3. And so if I were to plot that, um, let's see, let's place it. So 2 would be this way, down 3 would be right here. Put a v here for vertex. Notice how this vertex is below. So if this is the middle part of the parabola, I have to connect it that way. So it looks like my lines are going up. And if this is our axis of symmetry, that cuts through here, cuts through the vertex. So it looks like it cuts at x equals 2. So the axis of symmetry is x equals 2. It's kind of weird. Let me fix that. So I can already tell that this vertex here is a minimum because that's lower than that point. But just to... Uh, get the full picture here. Notice how the this extra point here or the wider set is two units away So I need to go two units to the right to reflect Draw my parabola. Let me do that one more time And so it looks like this vertex here is a minimum. It's the lowest point 
domain is all real numbers for parabolas. And then the range here, the lowest y value is at negative 3 this point. The highest y value looks like it's going to infinity and bracket on the negative 3. And that's it. All right. So in our next slide here, we're going to run into the new topic here. Um, so in the next slide, you do not need to write down. All right, so like I said before, in this slide, you don't need to write down. I'd rather us investigate this problem. In the next slide, you will need to write down, though. So in this slide, I give you a parabola, and um, uh, th this graph is actually from this story problem. But before I talk about the story problem, I want us just to recognize that looks like we have the parabola with a maximum. And let's see if we can figure out what that maximum point is coordinate point here looks like it's at 5 for the x value and y is 25. So 5 and 25. So we have a maximum here. All right, let's go back to the story problem. So it says here that Miss Chang has a brother, Jonathan, who is a barista at a coffee shop and wants to find the best price to sell his new latte. After trying out different prices, he graphed the data and he collected it. He graphed the data he collected. So here's what happened. So my brother... Um, is trying to sell his latte here, his new latte recipe. And um, he tried it out with different prices for this new latte because he wanted to see how the customer would react by the different prices uh, so that he can find the best price to sell his latte at that make, you know, sells for the most cups. So it says here what price seems to sell the most cups of latte and how many cups were sold at that price. Well, it looks like the best price is at $5 because it sold the most, which was 25. So we could say, you know, the best price here is $5 because, um, I don't know why I wrote 24, because 25 cups were sold, which was the maximum here. So I think I've answered that question. The next part, it says, how many cups of latte was sold at $10 and zero dollars. So zero dollars is right here and ten dollars is right here. And it looks like at zero dollars, zero cups were sold, right? Because it's on the x-axis, so the y must be zero there. So zero cups. And it looks like at ten dollars, it's also at zero. So zero cups again. Huh. Let's try to understand why this is the case. I think for most of us, we understand that if we were to sell something at $10, it's too expensive, right? So less likely people are gonna buy your cup of coffee um, if it's too expensive. So at this point, Jonathan sold it at $10, so it looks like none of the co customers were gonna buy something that was too expensive. Um, and then at $0, he sold no cups, and that's a little bit iffy. You would think that if, if the coffee was free, more people would take it, but it doesn't look like that's the case. So two reasons that could be the case. Well, one is that Jonathan just didn't sell um, at $0. He might not have sold any, he might not have actually given away free coffee because most companies are never going to sell their product at $0 or not, are not going to give away free product, okay? That's basically what I'm saying, because you can't sustain if you are giving out a product um, and getting no profit from it. So that could be the case. Or the second case is that uh, people are questioning the, the quality of the coffee if it's placed at $0, right? Because if you think that something, you'd be very surprised, but um, psychologically, people don't always... Uh, go for the cheaper item because they question the quality of it. Um, so if you're selling something at zero dollars, so it's free, so you're handing off free coffee, um, some people might be like questioning what kind of water did you use? Did you use toilet water to make this coffee? Who knows, right? Like um, there are many times where I have actually passed free stuff or especially when it comes to food because I'm kind of questioning where it comes from. Unless I know the person who gave me that food, but usually I don't go around uh, grabbing all the free food that I could get, just personally. Um, and you'll notice a lot of people are like this. Some people will tolerate the free food. That is totally fine. But in this scenario, 
um, you will notice that most people, if you give like at a reasonable price, um, people will actually be drawn to it because they, they trust that, 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 that value has like better quality. So going back to this problem here, I want us to actually take a look at these two points. Notice how these two points sit on the x-axis, right? So when x equals 0 and when x equals 10, it sits there. And what we call these two points are the x-intercepts. So we have two x-intercepts. Uh, at 0, 0, and at 10, 0. Notice that x-intercepts, that the y value is always 0. Well, that's because it sits on the x-axis, and on the x-axis, the y is 0. So today's lesson, we're going to be talking about something called solutions, finding the solutions of a graph. And to find the solutions of a graph, you have to look at the x-axis and see where, which x value does it hit at. Well, this parabola hits it at x equals 0 and x equals 10. And so you have two solutions here. But it's actually talking about that you have two x-intercepts here. So let's take a look at um, today's lesson. Okay, so... Um, just like when we talked about x to the first power, there are three types of solutions for um, linear equations. So x to the first power, we saw that there was, um, so if you have x, uh, sorry, yeah, y equation, and then it's like just x to the first power, and I'll just make up an equation like this. We had, you know, three types of solutions. Um, we had one solution, we had infinitely many solutions, and then we had no solution, All right? So that was in the past. So now we're going to look at quadratic equation and its three types. So I've drawn a picture of each one, and we're going to go through and label what type they are based off the picture. So... When we're talking about solutions, we actually want to see where and how many points does it hit the x-axis. So in this first one here, it looks like there are two solutions because it hits the x-axis at two places. So this here would be two real solutions. And I'll talk about why I emphasize real later. But there are two real solutions here because there are two x-intercepts that we can see. In the next one, we have one real solution because you can see here on the graph that there's only one point that hits the x-axis, so this is one x-intercept. And then the last one here is a parabola, and it is a uh, notice how this one does not touch the x-axis at all, right? It's above the x-axis, so it's not touching it. So because there are no x-intercepts, we can say this one is no real solution. So you've been hearing me say real, right? Real just means um, that you can actually see it that, that x is a real number, that you can actually, uh, when you graph it, you can actually see it on the graph. So notice I can see two points. This one, I could see one point. Um, but that doesn't necessarily, like in this one here, I don't see it cross the, the x-axis, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't have a solution. It does, they just are not real. So if they're not real, then what the heck are they, right? Well, turns out we call those numbers or those solutions imaginary. And we'll get into that um, later on in the chapter, but not now, because we're not ready for it yet. So the last thing I want to say about quadratics is that because all quadratics have a power two, they will always have two solutions. 
Just like how x to the first power has a one solution, x squared has two solutions. Now you might be thinking, well, two solutions, those two don't have even two solutions. This one does, but this one only has one, and this one has none. Well, I, here's the thing, they actually both do have two, it's just that you might not be able to see the other one. Um, and that's really hard for me to explain, but just so you know, um, as a disclaimer, all quadratics do actually have two solutions, they just not might, might not be all real solutions. Um, so, let's do a few examples. Oh, actually, I would like to mention before I head on to the next one is that um, don't worry about this yet, that every quadratic needs to have two solutions. For now, we've just learned graphing, so I still want you to use this vocabulary to solve these problems on figuring out how many solutions they are. So for now, this is okay to use. All right, so in this slide here, we're going to practice those concepts. So um, this one, I can see that this parabola crosses the x-axis twice, right, here at negative 3 and here at positive 1. So that tells me that there are two solutions at x equals negative 3 and 1, and that's it. This one here looks like it crosses as one point at negative 3, so there is one solution. And x equals negative 3. Whereas this last one here, notice how this doesn't even touch the, um, the x-axis, right? This parabola is not touching the x-axis, but it is touching the y-axis. But that doesn't matter in this case because solution is talking about what x equals, right? So in this case, this is a no solution. And that's it for this journal. So in the next slide, what I'm going to be doing is two problems from the uh, packet. So if you want to turn to page three of the packet, I'm going to do problems one and four. I highly encourage you to follow along if you haven't done those homework problems. So like I said, this problem is from page three. So what I want you to do is to graph it and find the solution. So where does this parabola cross the um, x axis? So here's the thing. So we have to graph it. The first thing you need to recognize is what type it is. So this one is vertex form. So we have a vertex form. And vertex form is nice because you can graph the vertex very quickly using that guideline of what is the shift, remember? So if we have, you know, this is our template. Remember, whenever this is a negative, you move right. Whenever it's a positive on the inside, you move left. This is a positive on the outside. It's up, negative means down. And A is the slope but the run always has to be one. So A over one always for the slope. All right, so going to this equation here, there's a minus two on the inside, so this means right, plus two on the, uh, sorry, plus one on the outside, so this is up one. So this is right two up one. So right two up one is right here, and that is gonna be plotting the vertex. So I'm going to put my vertex here, 2, 1. And then from here, you will need the slope. So this slope here, it looks like a negative, negative 1, it looks like. So my slope is negative 1 over 1. And so I'm going to go down 1, down 1 over 1 and then down one over to the opposite side so I can reflect. And then when I connect the dots here, I create my parabola. But I also hit the x-axis when I was um, using my slope, right? It hit it at one and three. So x equals one and three are my solution. And that's it. So these problems are actually a lot easier now that we have spent some time graphing. So all you have to do is graph it how you've learned. You don't have to find all those details like the domain range or the axis of symmetry. 
um, but it just might help to so that you can get a complete graph. So all I like to do is like find the three points, graph it, make sure I extend it so it hits the x axis. Um, and so I can figure out what x value does it hit that. So in the next one here, we're going to do a standard form one. So that way you get, you kind of see what, how to do the standard. All right, so here you do have an equation that's in standard form. Um, so standard form has an A, B, and C. So uh, my A here looks like it's negative 1. My B here is 2, and my C here is negative 4. And so in this case, remember, C is our y-intercept. And so my y-intercept's at negative 4, so here. And that's not my vertex, so I have to go find my vertex. My vertex is using that formula, um, x equals negative b over 2a. So my b here is 2, so that's going to be negative 2. I already have a negative down 2. So I plugged in my 2 over 2 times my a. My a is negative 1. If I multiply this out, the bottom is negative 2, the top is negative 2. If I divide, that's a positive 1. So this is going to be, um, x is going to equal 1. So now I just need my y. So I'm going to use that equation, negative x squared. So that's going to be negative 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 4. If I work this out, 1 squared is 1. So this is negative 1 plus 2 times 1 is 2. Minus 4, 1 plus 2, negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Minus 4 is negative 3. So in this case here, it looks like my vertex is at 1, negative 3, which is right here. If that's my vertex, that's going to be the middle of my, um, of my parabola. See if I can draw better. There we go. Ah, I missed the dot. There we go. So if this is the axis of symmetry and I were to reflect the green dot, it'd be right here. And then I would connect the lines. Okay, so what I noticed is that when I drew this, uh, the, the lines are pointing down. But I want to know where does it cross the x-axis. So this parabola doesn't even touch the x-axis. It's a little bit further down. So in this case, there are no intercepts, x-intercepts, so this is a no solution. And all right, guys, that's all for this journal. I hope this helps with your homework packet. At this point, pages 1 through 3 are now assigned in the homework packet. All right, have a great day, guys.